Welcome to Main Street Mavericks. Celebrating conversations with exceptional Main Street businesses who serve friends and neighbors in your community. Here's your host, Joel Helfer. Good afternoon. This is Joel Helfer, Main Street Mavericks Radio, and welcome to another episode. Today we have a very special guest. His name is Timothy R. Johnson. Timothy is from the greater Chicago area. He is an investor specializing in selling, rehabilitating, and renting real estate. He's the former owner of Noah Construction, currently the owner of Bradley Management and Global Renegade. Uh, Tim is the author of five books and currently works as the business development manager for Clint Arthur's Status Factory. Uh, he's a graduate of the Status Factory and has 18 national and local TV appearances to his credit. Uh, mm-hmm. The Status Factory programs are designed to give its graduates higher status than their comp- competition. And Tim enrolls ideal clients in these programs as well as creates joint ventures and strategic alliances for the Status Factory. Tim, welcome to the show. Yes. How you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. I know our audience is anxious to hear about status and help and how you help people achieve status. Tell me a little bit about that. What do you do? Well, obviously, you know, we understand that obviously if you, if you look at people like Ben Affleck and, you know, uh, Angelina Jolie, and you look at all of the people that became famous, it was generally done through media. So whether that was talk shows, being on TV, being in a movie, you know, we obviously, we understand that people always want to be like the movie stars, right? I mean, that's why, you know, you see lip sync battle and you see all these people do crazy, crazy stuff on media and it's just drawing attention to your audience so that people understand and know and trust you. So obviously when people see somebody on, see something on TV, they think it is an authority figure. Right. So what we try to do is elevate their brand through the sources of media, you know, radio, TV. Uh, we do an event at West Point. We just got done doing that. We just did one at Harvard Business Faculty Center there at Harvard University. So really just taking some of that media, putting it in magazines, putting it on TV, really just kind of elevate your status. What, what I think that does is when people come into your office and see, you know, Hey, you wrote a book and it's from Harvard or, you know, you've seen something that, you know, was, and all of a sudden you see that, you know, they see that you were on TV. I think it just, you know, people get excited, you know, when you're doing business with something like that, I think it, the buyer restriction drops way down because of that. Does that make sense? Oh, makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of people get a little bit nervous about being in such high profile places like, West Point and Harvard, how do you prepare them and get them ready so they do a good job and present themselves in the best possible way? You know, I life? think a lot of it is your message. See, we, we don't tell, we always want to tell people what we want them to know, but not what we don't want them to know. And I think through stories, I think when we tell people our story, the one that we don't want people to hear, I think our customers identify with us better. You know, because we always want to go on TV. People don't always want to know what to do. They want to know, like, the five pitfalls not to do so they can become successful, right? And success is, I think, is a mindset. I think a lot of times we've been told, you know, we always wanted it better for our kids, but we forgot to teach our kids how to fish, not give them a fish. (laughs) And And I think through media, you know, whether that's NBC, NBC, you know, Clint, is literally booked over 3,500 different TV segments in the 30 different um, celebrity launch pads that we've done, we've been able to create some major success. So, you know, I kind of started, I was in Clint's very second class that ever came out. I was very, I was his very first titanium customer um, right down to the point that, you know, uh, you know, him and I've been together kind of through some strategic things that we've done together. You know, I was there when he won Infomark of the Year. You know, I was there at the event at GKIC when he when he created the all time sales record for it. And I think just elevating your status is really the five people that you hang around with most. I mean, if you see the paparazzi, I mean, celebrities hang around celebrities. And I think when you up that brand of who you hang out with, 
and the people that you do business with, I think elevating that status, more people are going to want to know you because you're elevating your status. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I know you talked about um, misconceptions and pitfalls that people have. What are some of the uh, pitfalls that people have to worry about when they're trying to elevate their status? Well, I think sometimes it's your self-worth. I think it's a mindset thing. They're like, oh, why would I ever want to be on TV? Remember, you're not the one. They say, when America's leading most doctor right here is on here to tell you what it is, that's not you saying it. It's, it's them saying it. Makes sense? Uh-huh. And I think a lot of people over time have forgot that it's okay to be a celebrity. You know what I mean? You have a message. They say, well, I don't have nothing to say. I think everybody has a story inside of themselves. And sometimes we're just afraid to share that. I think, you know, I've shared my message. You know, I've, I've grew up rough and a lot of different avenues and, and different stuff. I think that was a message that was given to me by God to really help change the world. You know, I have a friend, Peter Anthony, out of uh, Vegas that has uh, a platform called You Will Change the World. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's the message that we go out and we give to the world that really identifies who we are and what makes us different. No, you know, I there are... Be- there are two, there's no two stories that are exactly the same. You know, look at Tony Robbins. I mean, a guy that just came out, I mean, he's motivated billions and billions of people to changing their lives because he created a pathway to do that. I mean, he's been on TV, you know, he's been on Netflix, he's been on all these different places. And I think the more that you get your message out there and the more vulnerable you are about giving that message out with authenticity, I think the more that people are going to show up and want to do business with you because they're in the same place. Oh, there's no question. I totally agree with that. Um, I understand you're an author of five books. Congratulations. That must have taken a lot of effort to write five books. What's what's one of your favorite books that people should go to Amazon or the bookstore to pick up? You know, I, I just wrote a new one called Living a Wholesale Life in a Retail World. I think it's about dropping your ego. It's a lot of the money-saving tips that I do in the real estate. Obviously, I was nicknamed to kick it cheap by a lot of my friends. The only thing, I just did a lot of due diligence on what programs to use, what programs not to use, uh-huh. so that people could elevate what they're doing. So why waste your money doing a little bit of homework? That's how, obviously, I got the nickname, the King of Cheap. So getting on there and just doing a lot of the segments was – you know, the word cheap is a, is a really a negative word, but I think people, you know, back in the Great Depression, we were more about saving our money. We were more about paying stuff with cash. I think with the credit and everything that people are doing nowadays, I think we've got to the point where, you know, we're not in that space anymore. You know what I mean? We forgot how to save money. And I think with, you know, just going out, you know, hey, you want a new car, well, you know, elevating your credit score up a little bit will help you, you know, save you a lot of money over time. I think we just forgot to do the diligence process. We always wanted it better for our kids, better for our kids. We kind of wanted to hand it to them, but we forgot how to work for it. Does that make sense? Oh, it totally and I think makes that's, sense. You know, and you know as well as I do, when you, when you, you know, when you work for something, you take care of it a lot better. Does that make sense? Makes a tremendous sense. I know uh, a little off the subject, but uh, – it seems like the current generation today, the kids want everything faster and not putting in the same effort that we used to do. <laughs> oh, of course. Right. We just wanted to hand it to us. You know what I mean? And I think when, when things are handed to us, we don't take it into a different place. You know what I mean? No, I, I totally agree with you. And, and that's one of the things that interests me getting back to the status factory is that how do you select an ideal client? What's an ideal client that you like to work with to help them build their attention and, and their sphere of a celebrity? You know, I think it's positioning. I think it's make a difference and a fortune at the same time. You know, sharing your message. You know, every, I mean, there's no ideal or an ideal client. I think it's someone that is ready to go out and share their message in an authentic way that really has something to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, you say, you know, why do you want to do this? I want to make more money. Right. If, if that's your only mission in life is to make more money, then you, you don't have any why. And I think when somebody has why, a doctor wants to change the world because, you know, he sees kids are having trouble with nutrition. Or maybe it's a, a doctor that, you know what I mean, he says all these supplements. We have one of our students is, you know, sell supplements. And he says all the supplements, a lot of these supplements are there have a lot of byproducts in them that aren't all natural. 
But I think it's about changing the, the charisma about being on TV. I wear a Burger King hat. I give everybody in the you know, I give everybody at the studio a Burger King hat. I think it's about the charisma and about having the fun that you want to have. You know what I mean? And when you show up like that, TV is all about entertainment. I mean, look at Donald Trump. You know, Punch wrote a couple books about Donald Trump. Donald Trump's one of the biggest actors there is. I mean, he's just about having fun. He creates media, he creates drama. He just has a lot of fun with it. And when you can smile and have fun, speak louder, and do the stuff you want to do, I think people just want to get to know you more. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I totally, totally agree with you. Uh, tell me, uh, when you've worked for Clint Arthur at the Status Factory, what's one of the biggest successes you've had since you've been there that's helped further you? You know, I think one of our clients, uh, you know, he just did, he did, when we, when we spoke at Harvard Business Faculty Club, uh, he went up there, he had a five-minute pitch, he gave it to his uh sell it, you know, some of his sales guys and they actually went out, which was really cool and went out there, showed a video guy, had a, I love, he had a, I love Harvard bumper sticker. So uh-huh. what he did was go out and the guy closed an $83,000 construction contract just based on that video because he elevated his status because, you know, they got to see something where they connected. Makes sense. He loved Harvard, you know, one of our guys had spoke at Harvard, and the sales guy went out, showed out. They closed my eighty-three thousand dollars contract. Makes sense. That's pretty good. That was a good return on investment, I think. <laughs> That's definitely a re- good return on investment. You know, and I think is you know when you elevate your status and you do a lot of the, the different things that you do, I don't think it's just about status. I think if you elevate, the, I think once you raise your status, if you hang it diff- around a different type of person, I I see. I think you start to see some of the differences that are in there. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. And uh, so, what, are some, what are some of the qualities of these people that you like to hang out with? What would you say some of them are for the listeners that they should think about? I think they're ready. I think they're ready. They're somewhere in their life. They are either are trying to change the world one message at a time, or I think a lot of it is just that they're there to serve. They're not there to take, but they're there to serve and make things a lot easier. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I was talking to you. I understand you just came back from a nice cruise, the marketer's cruise. Tell me a little bit about that experience and how that helped further your business. Well, you know, obviously I won the Heart of Gold Award. I, I had sold 23 of the cabins on the boat and brought a lot of business owners and a lot of different people to the cruise because I think, you know, we're always good at one thing. The problem is we don't surround ourselves with the people that are expert in other things. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. And I think once you do that, I think it takes it to another point. It's almost like your board of directors. Fortune 500 companies have a board of directors that I think specialize in one specific area and that are really good at it. And I think when you do that, I think it's to the point where you start to see that when you start to align yourself with people that are experts in their field, kind of like we do it at some of our events, I think there's a lot of business that can be done cross-pollinating because, you know, Ford doesn't do it by themselves. You know, we, you know, we just had an event where Buzz Aldrin was with it. We were talking about going to space. Well, obviously, Buzz Aldrin is the one that's known for it, but right. obviously NASA and the team is the, the one that put them on the moon. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. And when you go out, I think when you hang around that caliber of people, I, I don't think you can do nothing but grow your business. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes total sense. And didn't they speak at one of the uh, meetings that you ran? When we were at uh, Harvard, when we were at the Harvard, uh, I mean, when we were at West Point, he was one of the main speakers that came. That must have been a real experience, actually, participating in a uh, seminar at West Point. Did you get it, it was great. It was it was definitely an event that was it was good. Uh, you know, I got to meet General Honore. He was one of the people that was a main uh, person that was there. He was the one that evacuated Katrina during that time. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It was it was just that good. Does that make sense? He was just just a, a influence of somebody that's had eighty five years of experience. I got to take pictures with him. You know, that's one of the great things about elevating your status. I think you know, like when you go around my office, you can see pictures of you know I have people all different kinds of pictures of different people that I've met because of raising my status. So when people like investors and people come into my office as a brick and mortar business, 
I think when they see those pictures, especially when they identify with someone they've really wanted to know and I've been able to meet, I think it just the buyer restriction that your customer has coming in the door is just so much better. You know, the conversation piece doesn't talk like you're not, they're not just coming in to do business. They want you to tell the stories. Hey, how did you meet Gene Simmons? How did you meet Dave Hester from Storage Wars? You know, how did you, you know, meet Buzz Aldrin? How did you meet, you know, all these amazing people that I've been able to meet? And I think that's just from doing business differently. I think it's going out with a serving attitude. And when you're there to serve your client and they can see the kind of caliber of people that you hang around, you know, and like we say, celebrities hang around with celebrities. Right. You know, you, you, you don't see Warren Buffett, you know, hanging out with, you know, some, you know, regular people. He hangs out. You see him at the gala events. You see him at around different kinds of people because that's who he surrounds himself with. And that's part of what you teach at the Status Factory is getting yep. people to hang out with people that are, um, what would say, equal or a little higher caliber than themselves. Is that correct? You know, I, sh- I shared that thing with you before. Did you see this? What be- I started the stupid movement. I want to be the stupidest guy in the room. Do you, do you remember I, sh- I was sharing that with you? I do. It's smart, unique person in demand. You know, I want to be in demand for my clients. I want people chasing me, not, not me having to chase clients. Right. And I think when you're the stupidest guy in the room and you can drop your ego, that's why we wrote the book, living a wholesale life in a retail world, I think was a lot based on just elevating that status to the point that, Hey, you know what? Somebody is probably a little smarter than you. And you are the five people that you hang around with most. I think when you can hang around the caliber of people and be the stupid person in the room and be in demand, I, I think you're going to notice that customers show up different, your friends show up different. And I think really in business, I think everything shows up different. I mean, even your office staff, different people. And I think if you take them along for the ride, I think you're going to find that, you know, people just show up different for you. What motivated you to get started in this uh, quest for helping people uh, raise their level of status? How'd you start? I think we I think we feel entitled. And, you know, obviously, Clint and I've been friends for a long time. And, you know, Clint called me one day. He was just having a little bit of trouble finding someone to do some business development. I've done a lot of brick-and-mortar businesses. And, uh, he called me up one day, and he said, listen, this is kind of my mission. You know, our mission was to really just change the status of a lot of business owners by getting them, you know, I've spoken in Nigeria, I've spoken in the Dominican Republic, I've, been, I've even been on TV in Nigeria, you know, because of my status, and, and been able to speak all over the world. I think when you do that, it was just the idea that you could be something different in life if, as long as, you know, we are in the land of opportunity, you know, but how do you, you know, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, I mean, look at that guy. I mean, he was just a regular college kid that grew into a three-and-a-half billion-dollar business. I think with the with the right purpose and the right people around you, I think you can accomplish anything. And I think that just kind of drove me to elevate my status because I didn't want to, you know, I've watched people my whole life. You know, I've watched, you know, I've been in foster homes. I've watched, you know, when, you know, abuse. I've watched, you know, my own personal life, you know, where, where my dad was in, in prison and, and different stuff like that. I think I just wanted something different out of life than just, just being. I wanted to be exceptional, you know. And I think when you go out, like we talked about on the phone the other day, is how can I assist you? I think when you go out in the world and how can you see, I think it comes back a hundredfold. You know, I just do. And, and seeing, you know, like Warren Buffett, he gave half his money away. And because he gave half his money away to help people, I mean, his company's grown even more. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you can ever outgive God, right? You know, he, he you do things time after time again. I, I think it comes to a point that you start to under, under, under oh, excuse me. You start to understand that status is just a huge thing. And, you know, and, and it's not an ego driven thing. I think it, it's a it's a mission that you go out in life is when you do want to elevate your status. And I always ask my clients, Are your kids worth you being successful? Are you beautiful? Are you sexy? Do you feel like you're somebody? And I think with T V and, and adding a lot of that stuff, I think it gives your office and your workplace something to stand behind, not just being there. Make sense? It does. And uh, do you have any uh, suggestions on how people can get started to improve their position, their status in their particular industry or field? You know, I, you know, obviously they can email me, you know what I mean? I could always have, you know, I have a county link, on, you know, that I can give you. You know, if somebody wants to talk about elevating their status, you know, more than willing, I'm always available by phone to go over stuff with people. Because I think sometimes, you know, people will tell you, well, I'm an orthodontist and I do this and I do that. Well, I don't think orthodontists do that. I think what orthodontists do is they bring back confidence in you. 
you know, your teeth look good. You know, you, if you need braces, it comes in. It's about having that pretty smile. I think when you smile more and you, and you raise that status, I think it's about, you know, why did they become that orthodontist? Why did they become that real estate investor? You know, was it to spend more time with their kids? Was it to give a better lifestyle for their grandkids? Was it to just get one extra trip this year? I think when you start to dial in what the why is, I think people accomplish their goals more. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. And I think people need to sit down. What is your mission statement? Why, why do you do what you do? And I think when you add that and you dial your message in, because we really, I mean, with YouTube and Facebook and social media, we really have less than 10 seconds to, to get somebody's attention as to why you're different than the 400,000 other people that are doing the same thing you're doing. And I wanted to be different. I wanted to be, I wanted to be different. I wanted to do bit different. I wanted to show my kids that there was something better in life than just being. I'm looking at one of the articles that you wrote in a magazine here where they label you the king of cheap. Where did that, where did that nickname come from? <laughs> well, I just like, for example, a lot of people, you know, I did due diligence. So I went to every supply house in the major area. I didn't want to spend, you know, so I took it back to Lowe's and, a lot of my guys are like, man, how do you always get stuff cheaper than anybody? I said, I did my due diligence. I started to make relationships with supply houses that would give me discounts that were better than what I would get at Lowe's. Then I would go to Lowe's. Then I would send it to Menards at Home Depot. And I would always try to get the best price to the point. You know, it was all about the materials and, and you know, using the right stuff. But at the same time, if you just take a little bit of time, just like with your status, just like about anything you do in life, if you do a little bit of due diligence, in life, I mean, who your friends are, who you hang out with, what you do, what you spend money on. And it just became one of those things uh, Clint gave me a long time ago. He's like, Timmy, you're the king of cheap, bro. Like, no one saves more money than you. And I, I research that stuff a lot. You know what I mean? Like, right now, I'm in the process of negotiating a deal from the same place that Priceline buys a lot of their stuff from. I wanted to buy my travel cheaper. Uh, you know, again, I love to travel. I like to do stuff. So I, I just make connections with people that have stuff but they don't know how to market it. They don't know how to be the face of it. They don't know how to make money with it. You know, it's the craziest thing how some people make money with stuff. I mean, look at you. You're in the construction trade. You're like, hey, man, this is great. You know, obviously, you've seen some writing on the wall. You got out when it was really good. And you're like, you know what? I just want to help elevate people's status. You know what I mean? Through digital or authority marketing or doing whatever. And you just created like what I call your second 50, right? You created a, a, a unique business. But, you know, I remember you talking about it the other day. You're like, listen, you know, I used to just leave candy. Just that little extra service that you gave <laughs> to somebody was everything, right? I mean, people are like, where's my candy? Right. I mean, they became so ingrained with it that, I mean, a, a 50 cent box of candy probably got you more business because you paid a little attention. Well, what it was and all it, about was not trying to make business clients, but to make friends. And well, I, so I'm a little different. I don't have friends. I either have acquaintances or I have brothers because I wanted it to be more family. You know what I mean? Right. I wanted them to feel like they were my family, not just a friend. I want, you know, obviously some people have customers. I say we have clients because I want those people to be in my family for the rest of my life. I want to do business. I want to help elevate their business at the same time at elevating ours. And I okay. think with, with what we do and even like what you said, I, I think we forgot how to uh, court people, you know, obviously nowadays with, with the society, we're so email driven. We're so stuff. We forgot to connect with our clients in a way that they, they want, that they want to call up and say, Hey man, happy birthday, brother. You know what I mean? Oh, is everything going well, man? Is everything good? And I think when you create that ambience, almost like you did the construction trade, just with a box of candy or just, you know, you had that, you said you had that group that came together so everybody could kind of trade secrets and right. just do business. But you didn't do it from a selfish point. You did it You're like, hey, man, you know, even one of your, the guys that you were, you know, that you talked about the other day was like, hey, man, I love this group you create. I got to get dinner. So what you created was a family environment. But now even your competition, they now want to pay for lunch because you created something that was better than anybody else. And I think people want to belong to something. They do, and I, I just did something this morning, which I normally don't do, is that I was working with a client, and we quoted him a price. And he said, I can't afford that. So I said to him, all right, let's turn the table around 360 degrees. How much can he afford, right? So he said, well, I can afford this. So I tailored a program 
to meet his needs at a price that he could afford. And guess what happened? He got the order. He bought. <laughs> so it shows well, you, he, if you look at it from the other person's point of view, <laughs> you can always be a winner. Sometimes, and like they say, half a loaf is better than nothing. And I think people have forgotten that today. Because they well, but going, what you did, here, here's what you created. Because you're able to work in his budget, and if he makes money from it, He's going to come back and be a lifetime client, not just a one-off. It's not the wham, bam, thank you, bam, that most people do nowadays. You're harvesting a, a family member that will probably spend money for the rest of his life. And, and that's really what elevating your status is because you care, you, didn't care, you care more about tailoring something to him than just trying to take his money. And that, I think, is a, a key point in not only status but in business in general, you know, is that in that's something that's it's like the old time street sports it's kind of been lost today. <laughs> hey, I never went to college, brother, but I do have a PhD in common sense. That's more important than going to college, you know. And uh, of course. That's what you call a college of hard knocks. <laughs> Or the easy knocks. I think people spend all this money. I didn't have to get a two hundred thousand dollar education to realize that you could just, if you elevated your status and hung around a different type of people, not the people that wanted, you know. And I'm not saying welfare is bad, but some people just feel entitled. Like, listen, why go work for it if the government's going to give it to me? No, no, you're hundred percent right. What's a a big takeaway? What's one key point that you would like the uh, listeners to remember about status that they could take with them and implement in their lives to make them better? You know, what, what a lot of Clint's clients and, and my friends tell me is I take what's between their brain and I put it in the bank. And a lot of people ask me, how do you do that? Because I think it's a story that they're not telling that's going to connect them to, the, to their clients. Does that make sense? Because we all, like, you know, when you and I were like, hey, you know, hey, Timmy, what do you do? And I started telling you, like, man, I really, hey, can I learn from you? And I'm like, absolutely. I'd love to. Right then, we we come to find out that we had a lot of construction background. Okay, well, one of the things. Listen, I still have a construction business, and there's probably you know that one little thing about sending out candy or doing something. I forgot to do that. You know, so I think it's when you when you go out with a serving attitude. I think what people need to realize is like, listen, don't worry about what's in it for you right now. If you if you go out and you're like, hey, what can I do to help? And we we had our conversation on the phone. Which hence now I'm on an interview with you. I, I think it's when you connect like that. I, I think you create, like you said. I think with people, you got to start building relationships. Right. Businesses don't grow; people do. Well, it can you know, my my office manager, you know, yeah. her whole job, her whole thing when she came to me, you know, she's like, listen, I want to start my own business. She wants to be a business owner. So I started training her. You know what I mean? It's not it's not one of those things, but you you know when you start to train somebody in a different mindset. You know, she, you know, she's got six kids, and now she's got another one on the way. You know, she has to be able to, at one time, she's going to need to be able to be able to sit at the office. So I don't let her go out and check on jobs anymore. She's now being the business owner. She's leveraging her time with other people's time. And I think that's what, when you can leverage other people's time, like, you know, I may come across something in the construction and, hey, hey, bro, Joe, I need a favor, man. I've run into this. What in the world did you do with this? Right. Oh, Timmy, just call this person. You know, I think we create our board of directors through relationships. Well, I used to do it through my competition. They became my friends. <laughs> yeah, and but that competition probably had a few jobs at one time. You're like, listen, you specialize in this part. You specialize in this part. And you probably referred back and forth. You know, I don't really like to do that, but that's what this guy really likes to do. They're right. You know, and that's what I did in the investing arena. A lot of investors come to me like, Timmy. What can you get shingles for? I'm like, oh, I get them for 65. They're like, I'm paying 85. I'm like, I'll just buy it under my name. So I created my own Sam's Club. Oh, and it's wonderful when you do those type of favors for people because they never forget them. Right. Let me ask you, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you and talk about status or real estate investing or any of the other really neat things that you do, how do they go about getting a hold of you, Tim? Well, they can call my cell phone. I mean, the easiest way is to... Best thing is usually text me, but then text me at 630-981-7245. Again, the number is 630-981-7245. Or if they want, they can text the word money, M-O-N-E-Y. Let me pull up the number real quick on my phone, and I'll tell you what that number is. Okay. Um, 574-203-9605. Repeat that one more time. The word money. To five seven four 
203-9605. What that do, that'll make an introduction to him because I love helping people make more money. I mean, that's why I became the business development manager at uh, Status Factory. It was really just once they elevate their status, what do they do with it? How do they get it out there? You know, and a lot of that is like using people like yourself, Nina, Clint. The, I put a board of directors together. Depending on what hole in their business they were missing, I tried to connect them with people that were the experts. Now, listen, I'm, I'm really good at elevating their status and, and, you know, helping them make more money. But sometimes they need systems. Sometimes they just need more media. Sometimes they need a radio show like this or they need a book or they need something that's different to help elevate their status so that when they do connect with their clients, you know, they're known as an expert in their field. And they get the third-party endorsement from either the book, the radio show, the speaking engagement, the audience, whatever. So other people are talking about all their fine qualities and not themselves. Well, this has exactly. been a wonderful interview. I've enjoyed having you on the show, Tim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me your insights and the status. And uh, we wish you well and good luck in your future businesses. I appreciate that, brother, and you as well. Thank you very much. This has been Tim Johnson from the Status Factory, and I always end the show by saying, have a little fun every day. Don't save it up. You've been listening to Main Street Mavericks Radio with Joel Helfer. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit MainStreetMavericks.com.